D-Dub's latest exclusive mini is here. Spiking bits. So this week sees the release, or at least a, the limited release, of Severina Rain, that female commissar that's going along with the, what is it, Honor Bound, Honor Bound new novel by Rachel Harrison from uh, the Black Library right there. And it's a, it's a pretty cool looking figure. There's rules in here, of course. And, well, you know, the internet had a lot to say, of course, about it being a female and, you know, the plating and the armor. And well, actually, according to a historical uh, you know, militaries and near world, real life, uh, armor should look this way. But <laughs> at the end of the day, I think, I think they did a good job with it. Debates aside, I think the miniature at yeah, face value definitely looks good, but who knows what awaits inside the box. Okay. Spoiler alert. There's a figure inside the box. <laughs> so this is a fine cast limited edition miniature that's exclusive this week, limited three per, per I guess, independent retailer store supposedly next week and at the black library event they will be available from games workshop themselves but don't know 100 percent quite yet we managed to get our hands on one of these they go for 35 dollars uh retail now a quick note about fine cast if you're just coming into the hobby and you're like man i keep hearing about this fine cast wtf is it good is it bad um long story short it it used to be bad and now it's good i guess question mark uh for the most part the detail is always very very good um, when it comes to these sorts of things here. The reason they use this material is it's easy to spin up and spin down. They don't have to put the production cost into it that you would with a traditional multi-part plastic kit. Um, and it retains detail, you know, uh, in some ways better than the actual forge ruled uh, resin, the smooth on resin that they use supposedly. And it's, uh, it's good looking stuff. Now here it's a little bright, but you can definitely see what's going on here. Now the reason uh, the square, we got the square sprue right here is because in the beginning and the reason Finecast perhaps got such a bad rep for itself or rap, however you say it, is that Games Workshop tried to use their existing pewter model molds, which came in like a cylindrical device and you would pour uh, pewter in the middle and then in a centrifuge, it would spread out and get into all the same cavities, much like an old film reel did. And then they pop it out and throw it in down the assembly line and we get all blister packed up. But fast forward to the big switch, they tried to use the same material in the same molds. And in a lot of cases, it didn't work. Once they reworked a lot of their molds and developed new ones such as this, it works pretty good. And the material is pretty good. So it's, it's kind of, you know, a few years later, five, six years later, we're getting the quality that we wanted in to back then in 2011 that kind of set the internet on fire but uh just one of the famous missteps that games workshop has recovered from master foley i would like to i would like to add right there as well so here's the base you got the sword um scabbard you've got the sword arm which looks to be very straight i'm i'm impressed by this uh this specimen of model right here and the bolt pistol arm and then a little base topper because I don't know where I put that case, but there's a base and there's a plastic clamshell. There it is around here somewhere. Now, when it comes to her rules, she is just a basic commissar. HQ choice. Oh, there's your instructions. We'll talk about the rules here in a sec. So there's an instructions to get a little, little uh, uh, flappy cape on the back there. It looks like you assemble the torso is a separate piece. Oh, so this is a traditional kind of assembly. Okay. Uh, arms go on separate, head goes on separate, but of course you're not going to be able to hot swap the heads because it's uh, locked into that pose right there with that flat piece. And that's it. So as far as rules go, and this is the first time we've seen not a separate piece of rules with points. Actually, I might take that back. I may be misspeaking here. I don't remember an Eisenhorn, but I know Marble didn't have points. This has the points included in the profile right here. I think she says 36 points. Yeah, 36 points match play game, which is one point more than a Lord Commissar model, which is also in the HQ slot. But there's nothing keeping you from just running her as a normal Commissar in the elite slot for like 16 points, I believe it is, which a lot of folks tend to do uh, just to save points and cash out that brigade to get those sweet, sweet Imperial Guards uh, CPs. She does have this ability here that allows um, friendly Astro Militarum within six of this model. So you're talking 12 inches in diameter, well, 13 if you count the model itself, uh, outwards, uh, to pass morale checks. 
uh, if this model is within one inches of, of an enemy. That's a little bold. That's a bold move. We'll see if she survives. <laughs> um, but it is it is a nifty little ability that I guess cost her the extra point and why she's not 35. I don't know. She's also have penance in event fall or even fall, which is her melee weapon, uh, strength of user, which of course is three, and penance, which is her strength forward neg one uh, super uh, bolt pistol right there. So not, not bad. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know. It's not going to be a game breaker or anything like that. Um, we got a little bit of time here, so why don't we clip her down and, and just put this uh, fine cast model to the test? Okay, so we got her all together here. A couple things I want to talk about. First of all, if, you, <laughs> if you're going to follow the instructions, don't do this. So I would like to make an amendment to the instructions. Uh, that back cape right there really helps if you attach the torso to the cape to get the proper line alignment and assembly and then attach it to uh, the bottom half of the legs. It really helps out. I just couldn't get the two to match up and then when I just attached them separately and they went together perfect and then just slotted it into the legs right there and then you know the scabbard and everything else from there. Also, um, something right underneath the collar right there, you can see I used a little Vallejo plastic putty. Where did I put it? A little Vallejo plastic putter, way better than liquid green stuff or green stuff, the no shrinkage or anything like that. It dries super hard, but it takes about three or four hours, so that's not dry yet. Uh, it'll scrape right away and be good to go. However, there is a little bit of gapping underneath the collar right there. You can almost see the line that it filled in right underneath there, running horizontally. Uh, I'm not sure what that was because the top is aligned right and the sides are all aligned right. Everything looks good. She's got a nice cool pose looking down the barrel of the gun. There's some weird stuff going on with the barrel you can see right there. I'm not sure that the detail filled in. The side little um, muzzle flash suppressor thingamabobbers cleared just fine, but the front's a little weird. But I think it would look good with a little wash in the, in the metal, so I'm not gonna mess with it and have it explode and, and literally fall apart. So I feel like, yeah, we're just, we're just gonna call that one good to go. The sword is nice and straight, so all those folks worried about fine cast kind of doing its bendy thing. And that looks good. Uh, hopefully everybody's comes out like that. And the base is really neat because it's got this little nub. You can see the nub that her foot goes into for the Captain Morgan stance. And then this little slot that I got some poster tack in to kind of hold it on there while we paint them separately, hopefully live over on Twitch. So overall, some good stuff, some bad stuff. You know, you just kind of got to augment your instructions real quick. Lots and lots of flash, so be careful there. But uh, there's nothing to really scrape away or anything like that. So um, I was pretty happy with the overall details themselves uh, as far as, you know, everything goes together and for the most part seem to uh, fit snugly and uh, no real super, uh, super duper issues right there. Now, how does she stack up to the normal guardsman? Because remember, this model is on a 32 millimeter base. Well, we got a little Deathcore Krieg. And Deuter, and you can see they're both kind of standing up, and she's she's a little bit bigger. She's a little bit bigger. She's uh, I don't know, she's big. <laughs> she's big compared to a guardsman. Uh, I think she's about the same size as Marbo. I don't have my, I do not have my Marbo handy, unfortunately. Uh, what else do I have handy? I don't know. I think I got. I think this is pretty much it. We've got. A uh, little, oh, we got a Watchmaster, but that's a Space Marine, so whatever. I don't feel like that's a good comparison. Anything else here? Ugh. Just Space Marines, but, well, let's see how she compares to a Space Marine. <sighs> so here's a Primaris, and I don't know. She's big. <laughs> She's big compared to a Primaris. Almost looks like if she was standing straight up, she might be just as tall as a Primaris. That's weird. I feel like... Maybe she's a meta. Maybe she's a meta commissar. I don't, know. I don't know. I didn't feel like by itself the scaling was off, but now when I put it up to those other miniatures, I feel like <laughs> the scaling might might be a bit off. I don't know. But other than that, I mean, we've gone over her rules. We've showed you how to uh, go ahead and assemble her. Just watch out for those gotchas. Assemble the back uh, cape to the top of the torso. Oh, there's a gap. Oof, I didn't even see that until I was looking. Oh, no, I guess that's by design. It's just a little um, collar flap. Okay, I guess that's by design. It doesn't look... It might look worse in the camera, but it doesn't look that bad uh, to the naked eye. You can actually see through the depths, but you can't see it in the camera. It looks like there's a really bad shadow, but it, there's not. And 
I mean, it sockets in the front. So I'm okay with this. I'm going to call this good. Um, some good, some bad. But overall, maybe the only genuine complaint is potentially the scaling is off. But if you can still score and get her in your hot little hands, get her assembled up and painted, um, I mean, she should look to scale with regular guardsmen. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those. I only have the Death Corps Kriegsmen. But I suppose that's an unfair comparison, seeing as how they are those uh, more boutique Forge World miniatures as opposed to the normal size guardsmen, which I actually don't own any of. <laughs> so keep that in mind when you're thinking about picking up this miniature. But other than that, she looks she looks good. The design, for the most part, is good. Just watch your uh, flash, watch your sprue lines, and definitely keep an eye on that assembly on the back there. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching our unboxing and assembly of the new Severina Rain, the limited edition Black Library 2019 exclusive uh, coming your way right now or perhaps next week on Games Workshop's website as well.